Hi, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Amdati Yoko Fushola. I hope you guys are doing amazing. I am here again to share the word of the Lord. It is Wednesday and um, yeah, I hope you guys are doing good. I hope your week, your week went well. I hope you guys are, you know, reading the word of the Lord and getting nourished in the spirit, you know. Um, yeah, today is going to be an exciting one. My energy is a bit like just on the low side because today has been really it's been really interesting. Um, got a lot of like weird clients towards the end of my shift today. And yeah, and just like it's some random things, right? And just like my emotion, my my emotions just been like a roller coaster today. And um, but I'm here, you know, I'm here and we're about to get that word in. And I have something very interesting for you guys. Um, we're gonna be doing Amos chapter eight today. It's going to be long, um, but I'm going to split this into a series because we're going to kind of like, you know, go into the word in my mind is going to bleed into Revelation um, chapter 19 and 20 because it's really interesting. Um, has anyone ever wondered, like, who is Gog and Magog in Revelation? We will be debunking that and we'll be getting much from the word today. And um, basically talk about that revelation and plugging that into Amos chapter eight. It is really hot in my apartment. I um wow. But yeah, I've got the fan blowing behind me and um it's great. <laughs> great. So Without further ado, we're going to start by praying. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for bringing us here today to glean from your word, despite whatever the enemy might be trying to bring to our table. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for as we are here to listen to you, you prepare our spirit, oh Lord, to receive your word. And um, I just pray let that, that you shine your light in our lives and just speak to us, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit speak to us as we are listening to your word, but I minister down to us in Jesus' name. But I let your word inspire us awesome lord to do more and to be better oh god in jesus name and i block every distractions from my end and from the audience's end and allow you to teach through me in jesus name lord i glorify your name oh lord take over in jesus mighty name amen um i feel like you know just like the way we do every time that we come up here i kind of give you a little bit of like what's going on um spiritually for me um again still the same being like spiritual warfare um and i feel like through my own spiritual warfare, I've kind of been able to, you know, just discern the enemy and kind of observe the patterns of the enemy and how the enemy actually tries to defraud the children of the Lord. Because, you know, sometimes the enemy tries to, you know, tempt you, but in a way that you're actually not aware of, like the enemy tries to trick you, you know, there is like tempting and tricking, right? Um, just like the way, you know, well, that's kind of true because like, you know, tempting is kind of like tricking, like, you know, if the enemy wants to tempt you, it will not basically tell you that, well, you know, like, you know, just still, um, yeah, you're going to go to hell, but like, what, whatever, you know, the enemy is not going to do that. The enemy is going to make his sin very appealing to you. I had, I've had many different dreams. Um, the one that actually stood out for me was this dream that I had. Um, in the dream, I was in... <laughs> I have talked about familiar spirits on this channel and basically me dealing with familiar spirit. Um, I feel like familiar spirit is very misunderstood in the Christian culture. And these are spirits that are basically a part of the armies of the Lord. I'm um, sorry, part of the armies of the devil. Oh my gosh. Yes. So they were basically there to um, basically recruit people to the army of the Lord, uh, of, the, of the enemy. The Lord is the, 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 the Lord is in my mouth today. The devil is not part of my vocabulary, guys. Um, but yeah. They're basically there to deceive people and yeah, to make them, you know, do something that they ought not to do. Um, but obviously not coming from the perspective of, well, you're gonna rebel against the Lord and like whatever, but no, it's like, you know, it's not that bad, you know, like whatever. Like, well, I'm just kind of sharing this because I feel like this um my transparency will give someone out there a revelation or more information as to how to navigate this time okay in that dream I was in a room that in a house that I don't like it's very like you know a strange house that I've never been in right it's like well the personality not me because it's a presentation dreams are oftentimes misunderstood as well um 
So yeah. And I say dreams, people have certain dreams and it's automatically think that, oh my God, like I had this dream, this bad thing is going to happen to me. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. Well, I'm just going to share my dream and I'm, I'm, maybe I will expand shit on like how the enemy actually, actually operates, right? Um. So in that dream, I was basically like alone and on the TV was like, you know, prime like i don't know how the enemy knew that i have a prime video for someone that actually doesn't i don't watch prime video i just subscribe to like other things right um i don't know how this familiar spirit actually gathered information that i actually have prime video what they did right and on the tv was like you know prime account you know i'm like looking at the dream not that i'm just i'm the, I'm the one observing the dream right so i'm like in the dream like I'm you know so I have I'm, I'm literally like sometimes I'm, I'm dreaming and I'm like I'm there I can see you presenting all these things to me sometimes I wake up and I'm like yeah like y'all demons I bind you in the name of the Lord Jesus but like what like seriously can't you bring about something better like the presentation is absolutely it's so terrible like you can do better next time you know so I know it's weird but like if you're if you are in that season or like you you are like just very aware you know what I'm talking about um and in that dream like that spirit was like same in the year like you know just felt like very comfortable it felt like a very familiar scene of someone that is about to masturbate and like possibly watch pornography um in the scene and like the, the just the atmosphere the, the voice saying that you know it, there's nothing bad it's just to do it like why don't you just like I'm you know, close your ear if you don't want to hear well just you know just talk just touch yourself like it doesn't it's nothing you know you can like it's like just the way the enemy was speaking I I cannot basically tell you exactly word for word and it's it's just it's not just the word it's the feeling in the dream like you like the personality in the dream is feeling it's like you you when you're in when you're observing the dream you, the enemy is programming your head to think that oh that's why that's why it's an evil manipulation the enemy tries to program your head to think that well even though the word of the lord says there's like mm, it's not it's not like as if you're fornicating it's not like as if you're committing adultery like where in the bible does it say that but the bible talks about how it talks about the the, the lust of the flesh like does what you do it does it honor the lord that's the question you know and i'm like you know the, the person personality in gyms like seem very convinced and things like that you know before anything i'm like right like you obviously when you when you all you have the word of the lord instilled inside of you and things like that right you are spiritually aware you're able to see you to remember things you know that the enemy is trying to do in the spiritual and obviously and then woke up and i'm like right like are you freaking serious like i dealt with those demons right but it doesn't mean that they're going to stop because they have a job to do you know but no weapon formed against me shall prosper um but yeah a person that is not that doesn't read the word of the lord doesn't pray um is not spiritually um doesn't have spiritual discernment um is spiritually weak um or spiritually dead will end up actually carrying out that information that activity in a spiritual realm okay and that's a bad thing you know that's an absolutely bad thing it's not a great thing carry out in the spiritual realm and then you know it's, it does something to you but then obviously when you wake up there's certain things that you have to do but I think when it's, it's a it's a if it's a spiritual thing it's oh it's deep you know it's pretty deep you know you gotta pray and do what you gotta do and cleanse yourself you know and things like that um, but you know, it just shows like where you're at, you know, it shows like where you're at in your thinking. Um, if the enemy is about to do so, some things like that, and he might successfully is it, it does it, you know. And sometimes the enemy will just kind of present a, a, a thing of like, you know, like you're almost there, you've almost done it, and things like that. But then it's like obviously you wake up and you take over the situation and you basically rebuke that because. If you don't, and you kind of wake up and you're like just kind of agreeing with the the presentation that you had saying, like, oh, you know, um, yeah, I had that dream, and what, then what? You know, you had that dream, and what? You know, it seems like you're okay with it. You know, 
Um, so yeah, and obviously you need to disagree with it and be with it because again, we are spiritual beings. You know, we're spiritual beings. I'm gonna take things very, very soon today. Um, I've pretty much shared that experience that I had and how we need to be prayerful when fasting this time is very, very crucial. Um, the enemy is literally like, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm I'm in the ministry and doing the things of the Lord. And maybe I know that everyone had you, know, you have a calling of the Lord upon your life, and the enemy is attacking people, you know. Um, yeah, when you do have a good night's sleep, thank the Lord. <laughs> Thank the Lord. Okay. Um, but yeah, I wish I actually took a nap this afternoon. I feel like things have gone a bit more, like at least better. Um, I just hope that I'm able to just share everything that I want to share today. So I have a lot to share. That's the thing. Like this is just there's a lot that I need to debunk. But you know, we're just gonna start from Amos chapter eight and just kind of walk our way through. Um just one second. All right. And I also wanted to share um, in terms of like, you know, I don't know if, if, about you, but like, have you ever, you know, experienced such like feeling in your mind? Like something seems so familiar to you and you kind of feel like because it's so familiar to you, you feel like a say that thing is a good thing when in fact because it's so familiar to you does not actually mean like it's a good thing because you that means that you've actually experienced something like that you've been with somebody like that before in the past and that person is not good for you you know and then when you're actually experiencing that same reality you know in today like in the present moment life you know you're feeling that anxiety that that you're feeling ner your nerves are starting to like you know um just Ugh. and then you're like ah oh, I don't know maybe it's just me and maybe I'm just like I don't know why I'm nervous and then you kind of like pick on yourself a little like um I don't know this person this person this thing is literally nothing like maybe it's just me and it's just like I'm just um I don't know maybe it's just like it's just I'm I'm the one at fault and things like that but it's like you no know, like your spirit is just trying to tell you that this thing that you're experiencing, this person that is in front of you is a familiar spirit. Like, and it, we're in this season where the familiar spirit, this familiar spirit are attacking us. And, you know, if you're like me and you are basically like just speaking to people over the phone and things like that, and you barely socialize with people in your life, you know, except like church and things like that, and that work, right? Um, it's like on, on social media, you socialize with people, with people. Like you don't socialize with them like live or like you basically talk with people on social media, you know? And it's, content actually pop up and you see something that you're actually familiar with. And then you're kind of like, oh, like, you know, da-da-da, da-da-da, you know? And today, like I was having that same experience where like I, that this person is like, I was actually watching, reminded me of like a friend so a friend that I that someone that used to be my friend, you know, in university, that girl was very interesting. We're no longer friends, thank God. But you know, I kind of like took a liking to this new personality, the same person, but a different face and a different re well, reality, but the same person. Um, and then like I'm starting to get some at, at first it felt okay, like watching like two videos, right? And the third one, like, you know, I'm like. And just kind of felt uneasy. Like my spirit, I was literally like in the subway and I sat, I sat beside a guy and like, I didn't realize that my spirit had been like, had kind of like connected to that spirit that she was carrying. This, this is weird. But the person that I was sitting close to also caught that same feeling. My spirit was very nervous because of that. And that person close to me started to like, what's the word again? Um, G and G it started to feel very jittery you know when someone is very very anxious and when I I literally knew that I, I'm like whoa like why am I why is my heart beating and and I looked I was I was feeling my heart beats before you know but I'm like I stopped again and I'm like and I saw the person like literally shaking his leg <laughs> shaking his leg and I'm like oh my god and the Bible actually talks about this too remember when the um Egyptian I'm sorry the Egyptian the Israelites wanted to go into battle with the Amorites I believe in the Tyronomy and it talks about how 
you know, they should not basically stay close to people that are actually fearful during those times. But, they, but those ones that are actually fearful should not be amongst them, basically, because fear is contagious. And this is not basically about fear. It's a warning sign. It's a signal sign that get the freak out. Get that, get that personality, you know, out of your sight. You know, it's not good for your spirit. And it felt so convincing. That's the thing. Like whatever that was familiar to you that is trying to present itself or to influence your reality or your future, because we're in a transition spirit um season right now. Guys, you have to pardon me today. We're in a transition season right now. And so there's certain things that are familiar with them to you in the past that will try to come back. And it's like, if God is not saying for you to come back, you have to be able to discern and say, you know what? I read love. Alright, okay, stop there. Stop there. You're not going any further. But if you're not, if you're not spiritually alert, like you will end up like opening a door for that same familiar spirit. Those, whether it's a person, it's a thing, it's an activity, something that's familiar to you to resurface and to basically block that future that the Lord is trying to build for you. And the one thing that I noticed from like, cause I, I watched like two different person that was giving me that same familiar spirit and you can, and from my own, like it, since I've been talking to you, like I think for about 20 minutes now, um, I've talked about a fam familiar spirit in two different perspectives now. One as a familiar spirit, as a demon, right? That is trying to, that is familiar to you as it, it has the ability to get personal information about your life. Okay, because these are spirits. Um, two familiar spirits of spirits that are in people that are literally like the Bible talks about how the man um in um it's not this this I mean I forget the name of this place but he had like lesions of demons inside of him but these demons were many you know there were lesions and so these are the same kind of spirits demonic spirits but in different people right. And so you've dealt with that demon before, right? In somebody, and it's like, it's that same spirit in another person. And it's that same thing that is literally like in front of you. And it's like, your spirit can tell. The spirit's gonna scream, like, get the freak out of here. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Yup, we don't deal with demons. You know, we don't mess with them. Um, we cast them out and we bind them. We don't have, we don't listen to them. We don't hear them speak. And that's the thing, like, like they're so convincing. Like the person that is carrying the demon, a person that the person that's carrying the demon is usually like very convincing. Like they're very like you'd see them. They probably look like like very like they probably have like my face, not my face. God forbid, I rebuke that in the perfect name of Jesus. But you know what I mean. Not my face, but like they look like presentable. Do you know what I mean? Like they look like very, you know, like mm, she can't do anything. She can't hurt a fly. And like they, they look very well, you know, put together. Or perhaps possibly they're wearing like Louis Vuitton, you know, very like a uh, hand people that are gonna give you, you know, or possibly they're not. Possibly they're it, it's different, you know. Um they come in different shapes and size and forms and everything. So just be aware in the season. And one thing I would say is that not all that glitters is gold, not all that glitters is gold, and you need to be discerning in this time. Um, and just let the word of the Lord just lead you. Discernment in this season is absolutely numero uno. It's very, very important. Very important. Um, so yeah, that's what we're dealing with. And I'll continue to share how the Holy Spirit is revealing to me through my daily experiences, the personality of this familiar spirit, this demonic familiar spirit, spirit that we've dealt with. And always remember that life is like kind of like unfolding in patterns and we've dealt with like one pattern of our lives. And, you know, when you come into Christ Jesus, you are supposed to debunk and unravel that pattern that will change to set you off from that destiny that God has called you into. Perhaps you are in the world. The enemy wants to continue that same pattern. I remember I was having the dream. No, the enemy is such a liar. Like this dream is, is so crazy. Like the enemy started to draw this thing. Like I was in a dream. It set, felt like as if it was a, you know, there were demonic visions as well. And um, it's like, um, but this was what the enemy, the enemy was literally like, I don't know if the enemy doesn't know that I can see what he's doing. Cause I'm not like, I, 
oh my gosh, like, yeah, like, it's like, it bothered me to the point that this spirit literally would come and, like, literally, like, torment me in the night, but well, not torment me, because I can sleep, the only thing that bothers me is that I, that it's, you're disturbing my sleep, you know, um, and I know the Bible talks about, um, Jesus telling Peter that don't sleep so that you don't get tempted and things like that, but I'm like, wow, like, I literally, like, <laughs> I have to wake up in the morning for work. I have to sleep, you know. Um, but this spirit, they do have specific time that they would basically carry out the evil activities. It's not throughout the night, you know, but sometimes like, because I do segment my nights into two. So it's like, it's very interesting and very weird. Um, and yeah, in the dream, like basically I had, well, sort of like a vision because like I was, I wasn't, I was barely asleep, like, you know. Um, and then there was this like this a blank paper and then there was this thing going like like this like as if it's like a same pattern over and over again you know the same thing over and over again like as if the enemy was trying to program that into my life and I woke up obviously you, you have to I can't emphasize enough how important it is that you have to cancel every bad dream like you have the power you have power in your in your mouth you know you can cancel whatever the enemy is trying to print um so in your life that we talked about that the enemy is so stars amongst the weeds you know when the man is when the the the, the person that is um basically farming okay is sleeping right so you have to cancel it when and i'm glad for my gift because i'm able to see it and so i'm able to cancel it you know sometimes put the they slept loving the lord and everything on fire for the lord but they went through spiritual warfare in the night and the enemy saw the entire while they were asleep and they wake up a totally different person and they start to move crazy you know yeah spirituality is is really it's real you know sometimes you think that oh my gosh like um i want i want to do this just like great paul said i want to do this but my body's kind of doing the other thing it's this are this is spiritual it's more spiritual than you think you know and this time the enemy is going to come very strategic and so this is the time for you to stay close to the word of the Lord. Like this series that we're going to be doing, like you can listen to it in your car. You can listen to it when you're at work, when you're not, when you're at work, but depends on like your work setting stuff. So depends, right? Uh, when you're at home, right? You can do that. Um, When you're chilling, you can do that. Just try to, this is not the time for you to be just, you know, scrolling about randomly, like a, Oh my gosh, like the enemy is a liar. Like, seriously. Ah, oh my gosh. Anyways, just be careful is what I'm saying. I love you and I want you to, you know, be good in the season for you to harvest and get what the Lord is wanting to give you in the season. This is a transition season for a lot of people, you know. Amos chapter eight. I believe we talked about Amos chapter seven. Let me just see you guys. Oh, just one second. Um yeah, we did Amos chapter seven the last time. And we talked about, you know, linking that to Genesis, you know, about how the children of the devil will fight, fight against the Lord. You know, um, it's pretty interesting. Very, very interesting. And you can check the the just the way the Lord is so heck. It carries his emotions. Um, the Bible talks about how the Lord was rain cloth that was dipped in blood just to, like everything that was everything that was expressed in that scene when we were going to fight the battle at Armageddon it was very very symbolic and it's it's a symbolism of like you know what is happening and everything has a reason and a purpose and um you know I'm just so grateful and I will actually do revelations you know very soon and I don't care if I'm going to be touching like some parts of revelation again i think that the if you study the word of the lord over and over again you will always always get something different especially when you're looking at it from a different perspective amos chapter 8 it says thus hath the lord god showed upon unto me and behold a basket of summer fruits and he said amos what's yet thou and i said a basket of summer fruit then said the lord unto me the end is come upon my people of Israel. I will not again come by them anymore. So again, if you're reading the book of um, Ezekiel chapter 38 and Ezekiel chapter 39 and plugging it into in Revelations chapter um, 19 and 20, it talks about the children of Israel. Um, I'm pretty excited about like, you know, 
revelation, really. And you would see that the children of Israel that the Lord is actually referring to are the ones that actually survived the second death. So those ones are basically the new Israelites, okay? Um, those ones are the ones that are that are the Lord's faithful. And the children of Israel that the Lord is actually talking about here is like the former Israelites. He says the end is come. And this the Lord actually means this. The end as literally would come for the people of Israel. And, and in fact, and I think what is really interesting to me is that the revelations actually talked about the number of, you know, um, the tribes of, of Israel, the number of you know, each one of them, right, that would actually survive. He says 12,000 for um, Dan, 12,000 for Benjamin, 12,000 for every each and every one of them. So there was a specific number. And the reason why, and it's someone can ask, like, why is it that there were actually a specific number? Well, I'm going to answer. The reason why is because the Lord had preserved this people. If the Lord never set them apart, if the Lord never preserved them, they would have never survived because you need to understand the toxicity, the corruption of Israel. The Lord had to save a remnant out of this people, you know. Um, so, and it says, um, and the songs of the temple shall be howling in that day, said the Lord God. There shall be many dead bodies in every place. They shall cast them forth with silence. Hear this, oh yeah, that swallow up the needy, even to make the poor of the land to fail. So you can see like this is a this is an era of the this is a is an end of an era. It's an end of like a relationship. It's an end of a people, you know? Um and you know someone can say that well God made promise to Abraham. God, yes, God fulfilled the promise he made to Abraham. Abraham is a father of many nations. In fact, the Lord told him that he's going to be a father of like many nations. And he goes down to basically seeps to like nations, you know, and talks about how, um, you know, how many people are going to, of diverse tongues will actually survive, you know, um, the trying times. Um, so these people, you obviously see in chapter, verse four, actually, um, they are wicked. They are very, very, very wicked people. What really stood out for me is really the fact that they are money hungry, like very, very money hungry. I had to unfollow people. I've been like in this process where I'm just kind of like shedding weight, you know, kind of unfollowing people. Like your social media is very, very important. People that you actually follow, you don't realize, but they're actually influencing you. But obviously, like you should have that boundary there, like that would actually filter this people the Holy Spirit should be that ga uh, gatekeeper that would filter this people sometimes I find myself subscribing to certain people and then like 30 minutes later and the Holy Spirit says that you know that person is not that great for you so out it goes you know um yeah like they're like super money hungry you know they're super money hungry says so even to make the poor of the land to fail and you can ask like how do they actually do this they do this through policies, like policies are the best way, or should I say policy, policy making or, yeah, policy making, policy regulation. Policy basically is the best way to actually ensure that a people, a race actually fail, you know. Um, well, saying when will the new moon be gone that we may sell corn, right, and the Sabbath that we may set forth weeds making the effort small and the shekel great and fast sizing the balances by the seeds. I remember the part where it says on the Sabbath, on the Sabbath we shall actually sell for wheat. Um the um people of um of Tyra, remember in, in Nehemiah, they actually would be selling things outside of the gates, you know. Um to the children of Israel during the time of Sabbath. And I remember Nehemiah was actually like very peace with those people. We told them that never to do that again. The next time they actually try it, that it would lay his hands on them. So that was a well, that was some it was kind of like a verbal policy that was actually enacted by Nehemiah because it was the governor of James, uh, Jerusalem at that time. Um, but again, I don't think it was anything that was set on stone. And so you see, it says, saying, when will the new moon be gone? So that they can actually begin to sell things to those people, like you know. Um, well, when, when will the harvest be gone? Because obviously, like, you know, you grow your crops, you harvest, it runs out, you know, you now have to buy things, right? So, yeah, and you can see how, like, it's a Sabbath day and they're actually, like, 
you know, so that we may set forth weight, making the effort small, right? And the and the shekel. So they actually make they're treating, you know, on a day that's supposed to be holy. And they're actually like not even doing not, it's not like God is actually saying, okay, that's not even the problem. The problem is that they're actually cheating people. They're giving them lesser portion so that they can actually have more money because the lesser you give people, the more the more quantity of what you're selling, you know, you uh, you have. And then you're able to actually make more money because if this item is if this goods that you are selling if it's something that is of demand you will make a lot of money and so this is what these people were actually doing and it says that we may buy the poor for silver and this kind of takes us back to the book of genesis um joseph in the time of joseph right the children of the of egypt they couldn't actually afford to you know get bread anymore they sold everything they had their properties when they didn't have anything they, they canceled everything they had they sold it and when they didn't have any more to sell they sold themselves onto you know the the king right and it says and they that we may buy the poor for silver and you can tell the, the situation that's happening right now like there is not there is not no food those people it's not like in this time where like there's like you know mass production of food this time is like you whatever you want to eat you grow right um and it says i'm the needy for a pair of shoes yes sell the red fuse of the wheat so like even the scraps that he have you know how in deuteronomy the never talks about it like how you should whatever you have in your land just like we talk about in the book of esther you know our um our husband you know what's his name again Mordecai, it's not Mordecai, my like, gosh, not Esther, was it Esther? No, it's not Esther, is it Ruth? Yeah, Ruth and, and Mordecai, right? Remind me, guys. Remind me. Okay, let's go into it, three or three. I'm looking at my Bible, by the way. I'm looking at my Bible. Boaz, guys. Oh, wow. Ruth and Boaz. Remember, like, Ruth and Boaz. Like, Boaz literally, like, left the, um you know, the, the scraps. You know, you, I want, it's not scraps. It's actually, like, actually thin, you know, to eat. Um, and that's actually a, um, a law of Moses that, you know, you kind of have to leave things for people. When you are harvesting, you leave whatever, like, and it, it's very specific, like what you're supposed to leave, what you're supposed to take. So it was supposed to actually be like, you know, quality in quote scraps for people that didn't really have much that really were starving and were hungry to actually glean from. And that's where you see the introduction of like Ruth and Boaz, you know? Um, well, and it says the Lord has sworn by the excellency of Jacob. Surely I will never forget any of thy of their works, right? Um, it says, I will never forget any of their works. Their wickedness is just too much. These are people that are, don't really regard the law of Moses. And, and I feel like, yeah, just reading it really, it will tell you who these people are. I am not kidding at all. Like Jewish people are money hungry, even to this day. Um, Let me see if I can get um this Jewish for, art forger. I don't know if you've um, heard him talk. Oh my gosh. Is a fake. <laughs> this guy is convincing. Yes, Elma, Elma de Hori, Elma de Hori. Um, that's his name. This is him. That's his story. Um, I don't know if you. Is Jewish. Parent, teacher, no. friend, caregiver. I'm sorry. You're not just one thing. People depend on all. You know, ladies and gentlemen, in this life, there are two types of fakes. A fake fake and a real fake. Most people are fake or pretend to be something else or actors or pro wrestlers, whatever, where you're providing a fake version of yourself, but it's based on reality. But some people are really fake. Now, Clifford Irvin, uh, the fake creator of the Howard Hughes uh, uh, papers or books, eventually served jail time for ripping off uh, Life magazine and the American public. But uh, Clifford Irving was related to this guy in a lot of ways, which was featured in the, the classic documentary film F for Fake, uh, El Mia. Now, El Mia de Hoy 
was a famed Hungarian boy, born painter and art forger. He could recreate the best of artists of what it, what it's considered the 19th and 20th century era. He is claimed he is responsible for producing over a thousand forgeries that were sold to reputable art galleries all over the world. Again, these activities garnered a celebrity from a Clifford Irving book called Fake. Did that inspire Clifford for Howard Hughes? We don't know. And a Dr. Mary Essen film, again, by Orson Welles, F for Fake. One third of the movie is based on... L He's not the only one. Um, there's this very rich, like, is a Jewish is a Jewish man, by the way, in case you're wondering, is Jewish. Um, there's another man, um, I forget his name. Um, Icon. Icon is a Jewish man as well. Icon Jewish capitalist. They're money hungry. Okay. This man is um is a Jewish man, Carl Icon. I know and many people that are, you know basically keeping tabs on um Bloomberg they probably know him you know is is very rich and if you watch his interviews and things like that it will tell you like you know I remember I was watching one of his interviews it basically was saying that he doesn't want to give a percentage of his wealth to the people that actually need it because like he needs the money to continue to invest you know I think it's pretty crazy you know like Let's check out his net worth, by the way. Oh, sorry, guys. Um, just one second here. Eight point one billion, and between between that, it's one one billion dollars and twenty four billion dollars. So yeah, this man is very very interesting. You know, someone that is rich like that, but doesn't you know is not very given. It's not very nice, you know. Um, so I'm just giving you like two examples of like Jewish people in our times that still carry the same generational curse, right? Um, they're really like, I'm telling you, it's like, it's pretty interesting. And not to like pick on any Jewish people, but if you're like on the side of Jewish people and like you hear this, like, you know, and you're like that, you should, you should think about your, your ways, you know. Um, that's not the light that God has called us into, you know. And that's what we're actually reading, Amos chapter 8, you know. Um, and it says, um, Ye shall, shall not the land tremble for this, and every one mourn that dwelleth therein. Um, and so we can see um, Elmer, like he is trying, and if you watch his documentary, you'll be very, like, you know, obviously they try to make him look very good, but, you know, it takes a certain level of, like, determination to um, want to take advantage of people's work because that, what he's doing is forgery and it's not his work. It is taking advantage of people's work and that is absolutely unethical. It's an, un, 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 it's an un, unethical thing to do, you know. Um, it takes determination. It takes like a certain level of huge conscience to do that. Um, it takes precision, you know. It takes like a sudden level of hunger for money, a chase for materialistic things to actually attain that level of, you know, excellence that he actually did in evil. You know, his artwork is not of the Lord, you know, like this is, this is not, this is, this is, this is evil basically. And and I think like, that's so, that, I mean, for me personally, it just kind of shows to me that certain things that we idolize, certain things that we think that, well, it's really nothing, you know, uh, well, just like the way women actually wear, um, you know, dead person's hair in today's um, culture, a black woman actually, um, they say like, oh, well, you know, it was probably nothing and everyone's doing it and things like that. I feel like until the Lord actually removed the veil on our eyes, like we're not, we're still going to continue to agree with a certain culture. And it's only the word of the Lord that's actually able to remove that veil from our eyes to actually let us see, you know, what is behind the curtain. And I don't know, maybe, you know, maybe you listen to me and you hear me say this thing and you think that I'm saying absolute like nonsense. That's up to you that's really up to you um and I in the season just started to appreciate myself you know I'm not perfect this season really for me I'm, the Lord has started to show me like my flaws like 
like I can be impatient sometimes like when someone actually gets on my nerves like I'm like bro like you really don't want to freaking mess with me right now. Do you know what I mean? Well, I would not, I would not snap at you to your face, but I'm like going to like literally like just verbalize like how irritated that I like I am like literally irritated. Um, but yeah, and sometimes I'm like, yeah, you know, hmm, calm down, you know, it's cool. But that's literally like what the Lord is actually working. <laughs> it's working on in my life, you know. So like, yeah, but like, I mean, we have to get better. We just have to. And the word of the Lord is there to actually make us better. Um, so shall it says, shall not the land tremble for this, like for the iniquity of this people? Like we all have flaws, but this is like this is another level. This is another level of madness, you know. And everyone mourn. Like people are literally like crying, people are mourning, people are literally like sobbing, and people are dying because of your greed and you are not doing anything you don't care you know like i can't you know it can do something you know to help people but it wants to continue to invest to increase his net worth like it's gonna take it to heaven right um yeah so it said and everyone mourn that dwelleth therein and it shall rise up holy as a flood it shall rise up holy as a flood and it shall be cast out and drowned and by the flood of egypt right shall be cast out and drowned by the flood of egypt the land shall be erased uh, I, this is really interesting to me like i just when i think about this i just think about the picture of um gog and magog and um, literally this description or and the positioning of gog and magog against the children of against the land the children of israel right in the in revelation right i did try to do my research you know in case you're there and you can understand what i'm saying you can follow i did try to do my research and from what i saw the map that I see online, it's not actually the correct one because like, I feel like there's a lot of misunderstanding in that text. And I literally like, when I was literally like about to study, it took me two days. You know, there's some, like there's some scripture that will actually take you a while to actually get like it to, like for you to understand this time, like I literally stopped and my heart was like literally beating. Like my heart was beating. I'm like, oh, cool. can you like, I know, yes, like you have understanding, but like, this one is another level. Do you understand? Like, like literally, the, the Lord was showing me certain things. Like, it's like this thing, this magog, and like, yo, the, the oh, it was just like it was, it was the, the the communication, everything was just like given. Like, I could just, I was just soaking in the presence of the Lord and just allowing God to speak to me through his word. And just like the connections where. And the, the the hypothesis that I was making, or should I say the thesis I was making in my mind, the Lord actually proved me wrong the next. You know? And me, not me having a dream of like, forget about it, man. Like, bro. Oh, and to me, I just feel like they're saying that like, demons, are, the opposition, the enemy is jealous of our relationship with the Lord, right? Like literally jealous, like literally jealous. And so I have weird encounters and that's okay. And yeah, but, and you see, let's go back to the word of the Lord because that's what really matters. That's what really sets us on track. And it says, you know, it came to pass in that day said the Lord God, right? So we know already in verse eight that the land will literally be wiped off from the face of the earth. Like the land of, e of, of Israel will not exist anymore. And I talked about the fact that th there's going to be what's going to happen in Egypt. That was a prophetic word that I gave based upon the word of the Lord. And we already talked about this on this channel, how each and every child of the Lord that is consistent in reading the word, word of the Lord is a prophet. Like legit, it, it is a prophet. Bible talks about it in the book of Revelation that the testimony of, of, the, of the Lord, basically testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. You can translate that to say that the word of the Lord is prophecy. And so when you are able to discern, to speak, to understand the word of the Lord, what you're speaking out of your mouth is prophecy. And if you are able to discern, plug and let the spirit of the Lord break, who's out that word inside of you? You're speaking prophecy, you know? 
And and I talked about the difference between a seer and a prophet. And you know, prophetic, the prophetic is usually like a combination of both. But some people don't really have the ability of a seer. They might have other abilities, but not the one of a seer. It's the fact that the Lord wants to open their eyes to make them see something that was going to affect their future that then they will see. But there's certain people that are, you know, selected for things like this. Um, so yeah. Now, the word of the Lord is important, right? This is what's going to happen. And I talked about this. It might seem like Israel right now is, is like they're on top or like literally they will be wiped out. Wiped out. What I said was basically that many of them will be moving. They'll be going out and there'll be certain people coming in from America. You know, they'll be, they will, they will basically, there'll be a in and out type of thing, right? But this is another confirmation that they will literally be wiped out. It's kind of giving me, you know, um, Nehemiah type of thing. They, them trying to build something again, but it not being successful in the long run. And we're going to see that season kind of pop up again. Them trying to build that wall. You know, they're going through a battle right now. It's the same freaking pattern. It's demonic. It's the same freaking, freaking pattern. It's like them, there's, there's going to come a Nehemiah, you know, from abroad coming back, you know, trying to build something again. And then them going through that pattern again, you know, and it's like the same thing, you know, going the, the tradition, everything they're doing is just, you know, the law of death, right? It's like the same thing, the same thing, the same thing. And there'll come a time when, you know, Bible talks about the year, wiped off by the flood of Egypt, it shall be cast out and drowned as by the flood of Egypt, and it shall come to pass in that day, said the Lord, that I will cause the, the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day, right? So the sun is going to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day, kind of like an eclipse, you know? And I will turn your feasts onto mourning and all your songs into lamentation, and I will bring up sackcloth upon all loins and baldness upon every head and I will make it as the morning of an only sun and the end thereof as a bitter day. Behold, the days come and that said the Lord God that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor not a thirst for water, but of hearing, of hearing the words of the Lord. Hmm. This is really powerful. When I was reading this, like, you know, like you can have the word of the Lord, you can have it in paper, you know, but I don't know how to explain it. Like they will not be able to hear the words of God. Like the spirit of the Lord is really what brings the word of the Lord alive inside of us. Okay. Now, if someone has like it, like a dead spirit, you know, even if they hear a sermon, even if they they try to like read the word of the Lord, but they, they're spiritually dead, like they will not be able to get anything because of the amount of demons that is tied to them. Just the amount of, they're, they're living because of the Lord, spiritual location that they're in. The Bible talks about how Abraham was somewhere, you know, he was somewhere. I don't remember the location now. Maybe someone remembers. And there was um, the rich man, right? was begging they were like it's like the word of the lord, lord is somewhere right it's somewhere and there's like you know like you can see it <laughs> you know what i mean like you can see the word of the lord you can kind of you know see it it's like there you know and then you are down there you know you're thirsty nothing to drink nothing you know that that press the word of the lord is able to give you water to drink but you cannot you know and you're calling abraham abraham can you you know pass me something and it's like, well, you know what? I cannot. Let's talk about the, the word of the Lord. It's active. Do you know what I mean? Like it's a, it's like it's living, you know, almost, you know. This is Hebrews chapter four, verse 12. It says the word of God is living and active. You know, it's a, it's a, the Bible talks about how God is, Jesus Christ is the word of the Lord made flesh. The word of the Lord is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. The Bible talks about it also in Revelations, you know, Revelations chapter 19, the last um, verse, 
It says it's with the word, the, the sword. You see, it's, it says the word of the Lord is what? It's a, it's a sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing into the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and marrows, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. The word of the Lord is what? It's living and it's active. You see? Let's now go back. Let's go back again. Let's go back again. I was going to go into Revelation chapter 19. Uh, last one. Is, I, oh, is it the last one though? Let me see. Okay, forget about that one. Um, We're going to maybe touch into that some other time. But you see, it says the word of the Lord. It says, but of the hearing of the words of the Lord. Like you will... You will basically, you would have it in your, um, you know, in like it basically like in your view, right? But you will basically not be able to get get access, you know. Um, and it says, and they shall wander for from seas to sea, from sea to sea. These are people without any vision, from, from um, people that have been removed from you know, the promises of the Lord, like they, there is no word for them. There is no, there is no plan. There's no vision. Like it's like, they're, they're just wandering now. There's no, like literally like there's no mandate. There is nothing for them. Like, do you understand? Like they're children of the devil now. Like they're children of the opposition. They're God's enemies. And so God doesn't have any plan for them. Like they will end up in perdition. They shall wander from sea to sea and from north, even to the south. From even not even to the to the east, sorry, they shall run to and fro like the enemy, right? To seek the word of the Lord, and they shall not find it. Why are they seeking for the word of the Lord when they despise the word of the Lord? <laughs> yeah. I was watching the story, um, the movie of Jesus Christ the other day. Like, you need to watch that movie again. I will actually take the time to watch it. Lord, please remind me. I'm going to watch it on, on Thursday. I will watch it on Thursday night. I'm going to literally do, like, a movie night type thing. Um, but, yeah, like, just the way the Pharisees and the Sadducees were actually talking. Like, they were, the way they were talking, like, ugh, with so much unbelief. And I'm like... If you really say that you believe in the Lord and you believe the promises of the Lord, then how come you telling me that you don't really have any intention to test Jesus's spirit, to actually find out if he's really the Messiah that you're actually waiting for? The Bible talks about it that they would what? I will turn your feast into mourning and all your songs into your songs into lamentation. So they're going to be going through a very really hard time right now. Now is the time that they're going to like, it's not, and I'm telling you, this is not the time. They will have the word, the physical word of the Lord will be with them. But what they are looking for is salvation. They're looking for the one that God had said is going to come and save them. And it's like, you know, and just like the way that pastor I, took, I told you about was literally trying to like literally <laughs> Like using this logical mind to, to factor out when the coming of the Lord will be. They will be doing one plus one and two plus two. And they'll be looking for him like, ah, it's supposed to be, yeah. They would actually have proof that this man should have already arrived already. That would be what the, 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 the Bible will be saying or whatever Torah will be saying. And they'll be looking for this man. They'll be looking for him. The Bible talks about that Jesus Christ is the word the Lord make flesh. They will run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, but shall not find him. They can't find him. How would they find him? They're going through our times right now. It's only when you're going through our times right now that you are literally finding the Lord to repent. You know, it's when you're literally like going through that hard time. You've done been in the world. You've done whatever you wanted to do. The Lord is calling you. You're just doing whatever you want to do. And it's like now that you're in deep mess right now, you're on your knees screaming, Lord. Like, I'm just thinking about it in my head, like rain pouring down. Maybe you're in your shower and you're like kneeling down, like the shower is pouring down, and you're like, oh God, you know, screaming. Have you ever been in that situation before? Like all like all dressed, obviously, but you know, like you just you your head is hot, but you want water to like pour on your head, you know, like because bruh, just bruh, you know, it's just too much. Um, but Lord says that, you know what? Yeah. That salvation that you're looking, you're going to look for it and you're not going to find it. And it says, who? In that day shall the fair virgins and the young men faint for thirst. And I feel like 
this is very, very interesting because like, you know, obviously we know that they're talking about Jesus Christ. And one thing that I like about the Bible is that, you know, the, the Bible will always try to clarify certain things that, hey, like in case you don't really get what I'm trying to say, I'm trying to talk, I'm talking about Jesus Christ. Like, obviously that's the reference of like, you know, virgin, young man, Joseph, virgin, Mary, Duh, like you know what I mean and it's like they that swear by the scene of Samaria shall and say thy God of dad and Beth and the man of Beth Sheba liveth even they shall fall and never rise up again never rise up again this is God literally saying c'est assez j'ai déjà assez c'est trop you know it's too much I'm done I'm literally done with y'all it's, it's good. It's a wrap. You want to be with the devil? Go ahead and be with the devil. Because I know God, the Lord is saying that I know your patterns. You you will go ahead. You will, you will, you will repent. Well, you're looking for salvation to save you. Like just the way Moses kind of like came and did what he did. But what did you do after you betrayed the Lord? After he had done what he did? Oh, my goodness. Can somebody say, ask me to actually review what happened in Exodus? Like what God, the Lord actually did. Like, okay, let me just give you uh, one point out. The Bible talks about in Exodus how, you know, Pharaoh and his armies were actually chasing the children of Israel. And the children of Israel, they were actually scared and not told Moses to use his rod to, you know, split the waters into two. And the Bible talks about the east wind actually passed through the, the sea and the waters were, the, they were divided into two. But literally how it happened, you envision, envision it in your mind, it's a very miraculous thing. And the Bible talks about it as the children of Israel were, you know, passing through the Red Sea. And the, children, the Egyptians also were passing through, following after them, entered into the Red Sea. The angel of the Lord, there was a specific instruction, the angel of the Lord, literally was there that was turning like <laughs> so that the Egyptians would not catch up with the children of Israel what happened was that there was a cloud on the children of Israel that would basically be day and on the children of, of, of the Egyptians would basically be night so while this one's experiencing daylight they were experiencing night so night time so like they never they would be sleeping the sons would be working working the sons would be sleeping so they never was able to actually catch up with them and I'm like when I read that I'm like that is interesting it's so like just the way the Lord actually thinks about all of these things. And like, I feel like we are waiting for the Lord for something or like we're going through a certain situation and we're like, oh my God, like, oh my God. So you're feeling that pressure. Like you're like, oh my God, like this to be happen, yay, you know? And it's like, God, God is like, can you calm down? Like literally like I've ordered you steps, you know? They didn't even know all this was even going on. Like they were scared, you know? Oh, anyways, I feel like today is a good place to actually stop. But what I'm going to do is that I'm going to come up here tomorrow. <laughs> and I'm going to do that revelation that I've been wanting to do because like, why not? Because love what? Because it's important. We need to talk about it. We absolutely need to talk about it. And I kind of know it's going to be hot, but I just feel like the hot at the temperature is and i'm just gonna stop <laughs> the, the 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 darker wow well, i feel like i'm getting tanned but like whatever but yeah but it feels it's it's like uncomfortable but at the same time kind of embracing the inconvenience you know we kind of making it work for you and it's like hot yeah but yeah so um yeah so I'm going to see you guys tomorrow. I'm very excited. I can obviously, you can tell from my voice that I was having a low energy and I studied the word of the Lord, talked about it. And I feel so great, you know, shop up the morning. Um, and I'm so great that I have salvation and they wouldn't. And I'm so sorry for them. And I wish that they would just focus on the Lord and just like let go of material things. And like, yeah, like, you know, I'm excited. I don't know why. Um, so we're gonna do um revelations tomorrow, and um I'm happy because I got through Amos chapter eight, and we're gonna do Revelations chapter seven tomorrow. I'm sorry, 19 and we're gonna do Revelation chapter 19, 20, but we're gonna kind of 
talk about Ezekiel um, 38 and 39 to like, if you want to go study beforehand, you should do that. I think you should absolutely do that. The question we're going to be analyzing is who are the people or the nations? What are the nations of Magog and um, Gog? And um, the question basically is, if the people, if the remnants of the people that have the mark of the beast were killed by the sword of Jesus Christ, then who are the nations of the Gog and Magog that went against the children of Israel in the in the season in their season of rest, right? Well, after the season of rest, right? And um, after the 1000 years. So that is really exciting to me. It's, it's exciting to me. So <laughs> Maybe I'm weird, but like, yeah, it's whatever. And I'm pretty excited. Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. And we're going to discuss that. So we're going to pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for bringing us here today. Oh, Lord, I pray that if we have committed any sin, Father, Father, forgive us. And um, I thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit that is continually working through us in Jesus' name. But I just pray that you continue to guide us through this, through everything, Lord. And um. Yeah, and Lord, I just thank you and I pray that as we come back again tomorrow, you shield us and prepare our spirit to receive your word. We thank you, Lord, for this word that we've received, oh Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Abba. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And so again, we're still in that book of Amos talking about God's relationship with the children of Israel. And just we kind of see just how it has deteriorated. And um, you know, God is very, very um special like it deserves a safe place with the lord any thriving relationship deserves safety deserves like an atmosphere of safety like you cannot be in a relationship you cannot be in a space like you cannot be talking with someone and then you're feeling nervous feeling anxiety like that means like you're not in a safe place that means that you're not safe and if your partner is not making you safe then it means that there's trouble you know you need to figure that out and obviously like i would say take your space because that is not okay like your partner should be your safe place and we should be a safe place for god as well like god is a holy god like he is holy and we need to be holy ourselves we need to purge ourselves you know so that we can invite the presence of the lord in so that we can make that safety space for the lord because again the lord deserves safety and we have safety in the lord as well Bible talks about it you know in psalm 91 you say it every day before you sleep right come on now guys Lord is your refuge, right? How about the Lord, you being the refuge of the Lord? Come on now. Come on now. How about you being the refuge of the Lord? Don't you know that you are in a relationship with the Lord? Right? You said, he's my refuge and my fortress. You know, the Lord is saying that you are my refuge and my fortress. The Bible talks about it. It says, your body is the temple. Do you understand? Your body is the temple of the Lord. You are the refuge of the Lord. Ha. Hey, <laughs> go and meditate on it right now. God deserves a safe place, you know. He's, he has a relationship with you. It actually deserves a safe place. And just think about that, honestly. Think about it. And um, yeah, if the enemy is trying to do whatever, tell you whatever spiritual warfare, it means what means trying to convince you to do something, what, what, what not, or to deep out of something or whatnot, like, you know, think about it. Is what I'm doing going to honor the Lord? That should be your numero uno. And it's it's like when the emotion is like boiling and things like that, obviously, like you don't think about like, oh, like, Lord, my God. You think of, I feel like people think about God as this mighty God with like, you know, the God that's able to command the east wind to blow the sea. Blow the sea, divide it. Yay, that God. And they're like, ah, I'm just the God that's able to bring fire on the Mount Sinai. Ah, oh, God, it's chill. How many times did God actually do that? Like, only when he's peace. But God is very chill. Like, God is absolutely chill. I was I was singing this song at one time. The song was, like, in my spirit. And I'm like, bro, like, what do you mean that the Lord should stand up? Are you okay? That God has been in, has been working six days. The seven day that Lord is, and the Bible talks about that seven day, one day with the Lord is like, who knows how many, how many years, you know? You're not saying that the Lord should stand up. For what, I beg? What has God not seen? Can you, you go and sit down? You, you go and, <laughs> you go and sit down. I'm like, yo, I'm like, ah. Hey, Jay, but I'm still Leo. Just leave him alone. Leave him alone. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, that's what I just wanted to say, man. But 
the question is, is God actually safe with you? Do you know what I mean? Like, is God safe with you? Or are you one of those um, it, it, <laughs> Israelites that went to tie their nasty ends to be touching the ark of the Lord and the Lord smote them? And it's like, the question is, oh, like, why did the Lord do that? I'm not safe. God is literally telling them, I'm not safe with you. You, you was about to kill me. I am only. What do you mean? Like, you ah, don't mean now. Ah, do you know what I mean? Like, God protected himself. Like, no, what do you mean? Like, we're nasty self, man. Like, kill, kill, kill me now. Kill me shit. Ah, stop me. You know what I mean? Like, don't do that. <laughs> if you know you're right, you don't get it. But like, it's just, I'm basically interpreting, like, what do you mean? You know, like, you can't do that, you know, because I'm only basically is what the Lord's saying. So don't be like one of them. And uh, yeah, purge yourself, have communion. I think I'm actually going to do like, you know, record myself doing my communion. I think it's quite cute. I do it every day. Um. Oh my gosh. I don't know why I'm full of energy. Honestly, there are times like this and like, I am just like super hype. I'm not kidding. I get super hype super hyped okay so i know sometimes i'm just like pretty chill like very very chill and sometimes i'm just like no <laughs> all right guys thank you so much for watching i will see you tomorrow tomorrow okay i'm gonna see you tomorrow guys take care of yourself bye-bye